So yeah, so as I was saying, I used to go above and beyond mm -hmm. right out the gate. Yeah. So after my, God, after my first relationship, I actually would, I wanted to, I wanted to just take girls out. Like I didn't want to, I wasn't even looking to have sex. I was yeah. just, I just wanted some companionship. I wanted yeah, to just go to jazz course. clubs and I wanted to go to events and I wanted to yeah. just go have. You wanted a, to do adult shit. I wanted to just be an adult. Yeah. That's exactly what I, I wanted. I and it. so there was this girl, I'll never forget, there was this chick that I took out right after my relationship. It was my cousin's friend. And I said, yo, set it up. I'm, I'm in dire straits. I need it. <laughs> I'm like, it's crazy out here. I need it. I was at, away at college. I just started bodybuilding. I wasn't getting any ass. I, I was like so focused on the bodybuilding that I just needed to focus. And, and I, had to, I had to have that like distraction at home. So when I'm mm -hmm. at school, bodybuilding, and it's prep life. But yeah. when I, I can come home on the weekends, I can hang out with the significant other, this and that. Nice and regimented. Exactly. So um, she sets it up. And she lives all the way out, like, Nest Concert area. Oh, God. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Bad experiences with Nest Concert, but go ahead. <laughs> we both do, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so she she goes, uh, sorry, I'm just jacking up Jamal's gain because he's a smooth-ass talker. I, uh, yeah, listen, velvety. I ain't even trying to be, but I guess, hey. Panties are dropping in cars right now as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> so she she goes, yeah, we'll go to this, right? We'll, we'll, I'd love to go out with you, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So I come home for the weekend. I get the car detailed. I go, all right, I'm going to come pick you up at your house. And then I will bring us to the restaurant and I'll come back and drop you off. Cool. Good date. I drive. Listen, I drive. Listen, that, that, that's chivalry but wait, is not lost. It friend. gets better. This is good. I'm I like drive it. out to her house, uh -huh. pick her up, and I go inside. I have flowers for her and her mom. Oh, you doing it crazy. Yo. For mommy too? Mom too. I was, Ooh. dude, I was ready to go. So, and once again, I wasn't trying to get ass. Like, I wasn't trying to sell myself as like anything I wasn't. I was just yeah. being super respectful and I just wanted to put my absolute best foot forward. Of course. So then, take her all the way over here from this mm -hmm. concert, all the way over here to Toku. Yeah. I was already friends with the owner of the restaurant. Right, Toku. Walked in. Oh, Mr. Rizzo, we've been expecting you. How you doing, miss? Like this and that. Super, the matron like comes up. He goes, "Can I get you guys some drinks while we while we prepare your table for you?" Super pimpish. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, I felt like Goodfellas. Yeah. <laughs> he really bring the table yeah. out for him. Yeah, yeah. And we eat dinner. We're having a good time. Good conversation. Talking. Blah blah blah. Time to leave. I, I drive all the way back out from fucking Roslyn, all the way out to Nesconset again. I drop her, bro. I got a kiss on the cheek. Mm -hmm. I sat there and I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I'm not expecting you to tongue my face off, but I'm at least expecting just to give me a peck. Mm -hmm. Give me something. Nothing. Bro, after that, I was like, after that relationship ended and then after that date experience right after, I became jaded, man. As, yeah, I was I was I, jaded. I, I, I'm I, still, uh, I gotta be honest with you, I'm still a little jaded. I could, I could see that. I, I, I um... So I remember, like, I'm, a, I'm like a lone wolf. So if I decide I want to do something, I just go and do it. I don't really ask people to accompany me or anything like that. So for a very long time when I was younger, I just would, you know, I bought a Zagat book, and I would just flip open the pages. Whatever the page landed on, I would choose a restaurant from that page, and I'd go by myself. I would go on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right, I'd pick a spot for dessert. The whole nine yards. I don't even eat dessert, but I just wanted to see as many restaurants and stores and and things I could possibly see as a you know wanna be adult um, in the city, anywhere in New York actually, because it was Brooklyn, it was Queens, it was the city, it was the Bronx, it was you know Long Island, whatever it was. Um, and I remember I was like, all right, if I'm gonna date someone, I'm gonna I'm gonna have them tag along. It was very quick where I realized that they're ruining it for me. Your experience I, I, wasn't the same. I, no, 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 no. I, I need to do this on my own. This is for me. So I used to just, if I met someone or had a blind date or got hooked up with someone, it was coffee. Sit down across the table. Let's talk. People would always ask me, what is it you're looking for in a girl? I'm like, I'm not going to tell you. 
And they would think, they, they would be upset. They'd be like, why won't you tell me? That's like stupid. I'm like, okay, you could think it's stupid, but I refuse to have any of my time wasted. So I'm not going to sit here and you obviously are interested because you're sitting across the table. If I sit here and tell you what I'm looking for in a woman, you're going to do exactly what I told you. Yep. And then I'm going to fall in love with you because I, you're exactly the person I want. You've been everything that I've been looking for. Everything under happens? the sun. Six months down the line when you're nice and comfortable, the real you comes out and I can't stand your monkey ass. <laughs> now you done stole six months out of my life and I got to keep it moving now. So instead, I just want, want people to be themselves. If we're going to fall in love, if we're not, like just be yourself. But be authentic. You, yeah, like, like I was saying before, every man and woman knows what it takes and knows how to make the opposite sex, if they're interested, fall in love with them. Problem is, can you keep up that lie? And for how long, like and you for said? How, for how long? You know, once you lose interest, you don't care anymore. Yeah. And, and, now, and it now happens. You're, now you're hurting feelings. You're like, you know, you're ruining people like that. And for what? For what? But... It is what it is. I, I, I totally get it. I, I'd rather just be by myself. Uh, so I went to at, that, at that stage in my life, that was it. I just wanted to be by myself doing what I had to do, you know? And I remember sitting down with a psychiatrist once, he was a client of mine, and he's just like, you know, one good thing about you is just you are 100% comfortable being you. A lot of people can't be alone can't go to the movies by themselves, can't no. go to a restaurant by themselves. They always got to have someone around or talking to someone. They're like, you pretty pretty good with that. I'm like, yeah, I, I like my me time, my quiet time. Just helps me kind of bring myself back to neutral. And I think everybody should be able to do that. I've had friends actually not judge me, but judge me oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for doing things alone. When I went on that Hawaii trip. I remember you told me that trip. When I went on that Hawaii trip, man, and the girl that I was trying to see at the time, she's like, yeah, I can't get off of work. So it is what it is. Like She was just giving me like a mm -hmm. cold I remember. Yeah. situational thing. And I said, all right, fuck it. I'm not burning the money on this. I'm going by myself. And my mom was shocked. She's kind of amazed and going, you're, you're just going to go to, I, mean, I don't know how many fucking miles away. She's gonna, you're just going to go by yourself? Yeah, why not? I've, I've been an only child yes. my entire life. Do you really think it phases me when I sit in a room and I don't hear anybody else's voice? I actually like it. Yeah. I love Tell that shit. Dude, when I went out there, man, and all my friends were just like, oh, that's fucking crazy. I would cancel. I would cancel. I would cancel. Bro, I went out there. I remember just waking up and just nothing. There was nothing to do. No one to talk to. I just started my business, too. There was no, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't start my business. It was, uh, it was a year before I, I picked the camera up. I went the second time I went to Hawaii. I, I was already uh, involved with my business. But I, I just woke up and there was just peace and quiet. There was no, I have to answer. And everyone's six hours ahead. Yeah. So, the day is already like halfway yeah, over exactly. for a lot of people. For me, so you're not even on a cell phone. You're not even talking to anybody. I'm nothing. just getting yeah. started. I wake up. I went to my balcony. Damn, what does Nick feel like doing today? Exactly. And it was just such an awesome. Because at, at what point in in your days when you're home is it about I, me? Well, being well, it's just know, being it's just me, mom, and it's the dog. A little bit more often. It's yes. not too bad because yeah. I listen to. I say this almost every episode now. I listen to my boy Barra. Mm. On the phone. He calls me literally when he's on lunch breaks at work, in the car home, and then when his girl's at work. Mm. Generally, I don't hear from him if she if she's around. And it's nothing against him. It's just she's kind of like phone Nazi-ish. And he's got four kids with her. Yeah. But like every time he calls me, especially now that he's got the little, little one, uh, that's I think she's like four months old, five, mm. five months old. Bro screaming constantly his little girl doesn't stop crying she doesn't uh -huh. stop screaming every four months every time he because well it's because the, that's what my dad said but yeah. but no they said it's not uh, his girl evidently he said she ruined her because oh, she picks she, her up every single time, time she, she cries. cries yeah so now unless she's being held she and the screams. smell of mama's milk always comforts the babies as well so Bro. When the parents when the mother does that it's it's kind of it's bad. She is screaming every single time, and he's trying to talk to me. And I just every single time, I just go, "Yo, dude, I, I got to get I off the phone. Yeah. I can't, I can't listen to you." It changed my stance on kids. Now mm -hmm. I've said on multiple other episodes, I know that having kids with the right person is clutch. That's mm -hmm. the important part. Yeah. So for me, it's like everything with the right person. I'm sure is clutch. exactly. I'm Guaranteed. sure at some point I'll have kids. However, like right now, when I listen to that, and then I hang up with him, and I look at Kenji, and he's just sitting there staring at me. 
and the quiet. The house quiet. He's quieter <laughs> than fucking kids. And the house is just pin drop silent. I just sit there and go, man, if I had a fucking baby in here, I would be losing my absolute mind because I need that. I need that piece. My phone's ringing all fucking day. People hit me up all day. Hey Nick, where's this video project? Hey Nick, where's this? Oh, I'm I'm hitting this person up because I gotta edit. I gotta edit this. I gotta invoice this person. Oh, we're doing this next week. And then when I when I get that when 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 I put the phone down and I get, get that little bit of peace yeah. and quiet, I to give that and I want to let you speak. Yeah. When I give that slice up, it's gotta be for something special, man. Uh, and, and you know what I'm gonna tell you? It is special when it's your kid. When it's your kid crying. Yes, you're just like, damn, what the hell is going on? But you're more concerned that something's wrong. I need to make sure and take care of this. Whether or not the baby's hungry, if they, their ass is itching, they can't scratch it, whatever the <laughs> hell it is. You know what I'm saying? We all get crazy they, with that. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a different kind of, of feeling. You know what I mean? Like, yes, anybody else's baby screaming in your ear? Oh, my God. No way. God. Your own baby? It's, it's a stress, but it's more of a stress like... This is my little munchkin. I got to take care of this. Like, what is going we on? We got to handle this. Yes. And then when it's quiet then, quiet with no cell phone, a pin drop is great. Quiet, no cell phone, a pin drop, and a baby sleeping on your chest? Bro, listen. Oh, my man's about I'm to melt. I'm a man's, I'm a man's about man. To melt I'm a man's man. I am. Everybody knows that. There's no, there's no feeling like that. Okay. When it's yours... Dude, it, it, it's it's next level. But it's got to be yours. <laughs> it's got to be yours. All right, I'm sold. Any ladies out there? Anybody want to see? <laughs> because now he, he just sold me on the idea. Yeah, it's amazing. By the way, how it's we amazing. liking the beard, man? I love your beard, dude. I'm telling you. That. Remember, I, I I literally am looking. I'm like, yo, Rizzles, you're a handsome motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, I'm loving this beard. It's not too bad, right? No, it it's looks great. In. It looks great. Yeah, um, dude, I'm, I give it, give it, give it a little. Oh, and you got the little beard oil and everything in it, the conditioner. Constantly, dude. I know you're not supposed to do it every day. Almost every <laughs> other help every day. Not 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 the oil, but almost every day to every other day, I'm throwing in shampoo, conditioner, specifically for beards. Yeah. Soften it up. I'm getting it in there so I don't get itchy and it's not flaky. Right out the shower every single time. I, I bought beard balm. I put the beard balm in to hold it in place. I put the oils in before bed so it's nice and soft all night. Dude, I, if I'm going to have this on my face, I got to take care I, of it. I got to be honest. This is why I cut mine off. The only reason I ever, ever grew out my beard was because I lost a bet to Fab. <laughs> Obviously, Fab would want me to do, grow, grow my beard out. Fab, Fab's beard is like, he makes, he makes a... Uh, 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 dude, wolves, Rick Ross wolves howl jealous. when Yo, he walks outside dude. of a restaurant. I heard it when we left Robkey's that time. Too. <laughs> exactly. Like, I was like, what the He's, hell? His beard is, is dope. But yeah. he was like, yo, I lost a bet. I had to grow my beard out. And I was like, wait a minute. So you you telling me I got to put conditioner in this? Oh, yeah. I got to put beard oil. I got to put balm. I got to pick it out with a certain kind of pick. I said, and well, I hit, cut this off. I don't even put body lotion on, dude. Like, I'm out of here. This is it's too much upkeep. For and me. I hit the I hit it with the boar's head brush to keep uh, it to get all the, the wooden brush. Yes. Yes. With the salt, with the mm -hmm. hard bristles, mm -hmm. gets right through it, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's I, looking I, good. It's looking not too good. bad, man. I don't know. No, Listen, I think, I, it's gonna, I think it's it's gonna it's gonna fit you perfectly. I think so too. Like once I get a little leaner and the face gets sunken in a little bit, it grows down a little longer. A little you're longer, all set. yeah. And then I, I and then I trim the sides up so it's perfect. I'm telling you, perfect on sides. That's it. Summer 2022. I'm telling you right Nick's now. Nick's about to find Queen. I, like, what did I text you the other day? I'm telling you right now. When your beard is like that, what do you say? Fuck Tesla and all that. I'm investing my money in Huggies because <laughs> these bitches' pain is gonna be wet like diapers. You understand me? <laughs> All because of you in that bed. I need that endorsement. I need it right here. Huggies. <laughs> Go squeeze out your huggies, mommy. <laughs> Ring them out. <laughs> exactly. Ring them out right over the balcony. <laughs> Yo, dude. I love it. I'm glad to have you back in. Oh, I couldn't wait. We're back in the back cave. I could not wait. This is what we're doing, man. It's yeah, I know. We've, it's, been, it's been a couple weeks now. And yeah. Tr fucking crazy traveling for me and just Same running here. around. You've been, yeah, Florida back and forth. Yeah. You might as well just get a private jet at this point. You know, it's... I, I thought about it the other day. I was like, wait a minute. So what do, what do I have to make to be able to get a private jet? And I was like, until then, I'll sign up for clear. Have you walk through? Have you looked? Have you looked at private? Jet? I I haven't. I know the private jets are like what fifteen thousand a clip. I'm gonna get you right here. Like, That's a lot. Let's see. I think I think it's something like that. There's a there's actually an app that lets you. A client took me to Vegas on a private jet once. I think he mentioned something about fifteen grand. Flying private, sick man. I don't. I, 
I like it and I don't like it. The plane's a little too small for me, so you feel a little bit. You feel everything. You feel, yeah, and I don't like feeling that. But you get there faster. Yes, you do. Let's see. Flying private New York to Florida. Let's see what this costs. I butchered 99% of those words on that uh, typing, though. Um, I'd love to know. A light jet. So light jets provide some of the best prices as they are fuel efficient and can carry roughly six to eight passengers. So you're going, out, you're going down to Florida solo. It's just me. All right. So uh, it's anywhere from about ten to 13000 Yeah. Okay. So now what if we split that? With 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 seven six people, let's say oh, yeah, the light be nothing. Then, then you it know, be nothing. A couple of G's. So how about we we got to find six people to move down to Florida with me? Me, you, Fab. Fab, I've been talking to Fab about it. Dylan, my boy Dylan will move. Big baby will do it. Okay, there we he'll, go. He, well, he's he'd already moved, but he'll he'll jump on a flight. So now a guy like him, he's he's a large man. Does that does that equal two passengers? Two passengers. All right, so he pays I don't two. Don't want to ask any questions. He pays two fares and no luggage because that dude travels like he's a woman. Oh, does he? Oh my god, he's the one coming to the coming to the strip with the Louis Bro. V, Louis V bags. Like, if you see stacked. me getting on a plane, you're like, yo, are you planning on? Wait, are you just going for the day? I literally have a Duffle. book bag, and the book bag majority of the book bag is my my neck pillow. <laughs> that's that's it. I travel light. Him? Nah, he got two bags to put in, two carry-ons, uh, a book bag. I'm like, my man, everything Louis Vuitton. I'm like, yo, dude, you you too much, bro. That's extra. We don't need that. You too much. Nah, that's a lot. That's too much. I can't do that. But you got a lot of shit, I guess. I don't I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, don't ask me to carry shit. What what you're going down to Miami, right? That's where you've been working? I've been going to Miami, uh, yeah, trying to do some things at eleven, but I'm also I'm I'm looking at gyms trying to find some uh, clientele out there too. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then you've been going every week or every other week? Pretty much every week. Shit. Are you going again this week? No, I can't go this week. And next week might be a problem. I might try to try to go in between for a quick little. Listen, I'm not gonna lie, thing, man. Maybe next Florida trip, I'll come with you. I'll yeah, fuck, by all I'll, means, I'll come, come down with you. We'll go come together. Through. Come through. We'll do some shit. You know I what I want to do? Too. We got a film. I want you to come down when I have the. Uh, when we have the rest of the intensity products, because I found a great kitchen, beautiful light, everything, and we could do some videos making the uh, the drinks and all that good stuff. Cool. Yeah, we'll. Which which. You can make some money. We'll have a good time, and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll chill. Which elaborate to the people. Intensity Labs came yes. out with a new line. Intensity Labs. We gave a, a hint line. to it last time when I said the greens, but yes. like, what what's the, the full line? line? We have collagen. We have uh, the greens. We have a multivitamin. We have a test booster, and a cleanse. So we're gonna be we're gonna have two lines, a performance line and a lifeline. And uh, it's it's booming. We're waiting for a couple of products to be finished. The test boost will be done this week and the cleanse has been pretty much almost already sold. Love that. It's going great. That's fantastic. So, yeah. so the cleanse, what what is that it's just, just to wipe you out? Yeah, clean you out. It's How not often hit do you, you take like that? a laxative? Um, you'd use it after a bingeful weekend, a okay. vacation. Um, or if you just, you know, you decide you're going to switch things up and you want to, you know, jump on a healthy diet and make changes. So you need, you start need, off like that. You need then, a toilet nearby. No, nah, it's not that bad. It's not that, it's bad. Not that bad. You ever took Fiberlizer? Fiberlizer from, um, oh my God, from what's the Species? It? Yes, Species. species. Yeah. The, so Palumbo's like brand. You, you, you'll drink Fiberlizer before bed. You'll, you'll wake up in the morning. You'll go about your day and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know, I feel a little gurgle. Yeah, I got to squeeze gotta, something out. Got to use the bathroom and it's just a great movement. Cool. That's exactly what it is. I love that. Yeah. Right, You're so not going to have to be, you know, running back and forth to the toilet. Is it powder or pilled? Pilled. Cool. Yeah, because yeah. the fiber lies, you ever, try, you ever mix that shit up? If you wait too long, it's like drinking applesauce. <laughs> like thick applesauce, dude, the chunky type. Yo. You got to chew it. When you got to, like, if something's a drink and you got to chew it, dude, 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 it's a little too much. Fucking brutal. Yeah. I was, I used to have that on prep. I used to have fiber yeah. lies on prep. Mm -hmm. And, man, I would gag when I would have to drink that. Because they just you try to mix it up and it just wouldn't mix. So then you're just yeah. like literally, like you said, perfect example, chugging Drinking apple sludge. sauce, apple sauce exactly sludge. It was yep. fucking gross. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, man, I felt great in the morning. Oh yeah, flavor it was works. pretty good. Flavor was pretty good. It that, works. I, I, fruit punch. Tell me, one. it's a chewable. Yeah. Like don't don't you know don't yeah don't, don't gas don't, me up like it's a beverage. Yeah, don't don't make me think that I'm gonna have not. this smooth like little a, beverage drink with a spoon. I think I blended it one time and it really sucked because it got all congealed. Yeah, that's that's too much. Yeah, it just whipped it up too much. That's too much. But, yo, that on today's topic, though. Yes, man the fuck up. Man the fuck up in life and in the gym. And in the gym. I'm sick and tired of all these things I'm hearing and I'm seeing. And, you know, I don't want to sit here and just pick on people, but I have to. I, I, I just can't. I, I, I just listen to people in the gym talk. And sometimes I ask myself, I'm like, self, so should I say something to these people? Because 
they look at Ronnie Coleman, and I'm talking about in the gym, so, you know, there's a lot of bodybuilders in mm-hmm. there, you know, guys that are that are striving to be bodybuilders. And looking at Ronnie Coleman, they're looking at, at Arnold Schwarzenegger, they're looking at, you know, all these bodybuilders. And I'm like, all right, well, you guys are sitting here trying to find the easy way out of everything, not only in the gym but in life. And it shows because you'll come in the gym and the new phrase is stimulate, don't annihilate. Now, okay, I know some people love that. They want to, you know, they want to like, you know, run with that because it's the easy way. It's the new cure-all pill, right? Everybody's looking for the pill to do it all, right? Or just that one-stop shop. No, that's that's not what it is. I'm sorry. Let's take a scenario. If you clone me and we and I'm in jail. Okay? Cell 1, cell 2. Both Jamals. You get one Jamal that wakes up in the morning and says, "I'm going to do 10 push-ups a day to stimulate my pecs, my shoulders, my triceps. Then me. Cell B. Cell, cell two <laughs> is me. I'm going to do push-ups till I cannot move every day. When my years are up, when our years are up and we leave, whose chest is bigger, stronger, has more endurance, more hypertrophy, power, everything. Everything. Is it the stimulating? Is it cell number one who just stimulated but didn't <laughs> annihilate? Or the person that annihilated their shit. I'm going with cell B. Cell I mean, two. it's just common sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But guys just want to come in the gym, touch some things, and leave and think that this is what this is what bodybuilders and everybody do. If you look up to people like Ronnie Coleman, who's talking about, oh, this time to bleed. Yeah. Going to the gym for hours upon hours. Ain't and nothing but a peanut. We'll, we'll get we'll get into overtraining. That nonsense that people talk about as well, but we'll get into that as well. But Nobody in there just stimulated and walked out of the gym. These guys wake up, they did cardio. They ate all day long. They worked out, did two sets of two ex- two uh, sessions in the gym for two hours at a clip. And you re- you saw the success. You didn't see anything else but success. These are the people you look up to. So if you're look up looking up to them, how do you choose to do the exact opposite? Okay, genetics aside. That means you at least have to have the same, actually more work ethic than they do because you don't have their genetics. If you did, you're lucky. And far and few between. But even guys with the genetics and the work ethic still got to put it in. Or they say it's the drugs. It, well, that's another thing. I feel like, I, And I knew you were going to breach that. I wanted to slide yeah, that I in there like, while you say it. I feel it. like it's like you have, you have back in the day it was like work ethic – and annihilating your body was the catalyst. And drugs assisted that. Yeah, it was the top, it was the top off. Yes. Right? Topping the oil off. So now I feel like guys will come to the gym to just stimulate, not annihilate, and be in the gym for 30, 40 minutes, and take 10 times the amount of drugs to combat the work. The amount of times I've heard guys, you know, I'm not going to bring up any names or anything mm-hmm. like that just because this is their just keep profession, it neutral. but yeah. they, I just double up on this. I take more of that. I'm like, what the fuck? What are you talking about, Sounds like dude? a good way to kill yourself. It, it, exactly. And I'm like, come on, dude. That's not the answer. Like, what the hell? So instead of working hard and annihilating yourself, you're just going to take more drugs, right? But- that's not what the people you look up to did. So where is this coming from? Is it because our society, the millennials, are just like, everything is just given to them very easy? Like right now, I, I need instant gratification, so I have my cell phone. I can go and now I get Amazon Prime where I'll have it tomorrow. I, there's no waiting. There's no putting in real serious effort. Everything is at fingertips, at the touch, right? Yeah. And... You got that instant feeling of gratification. You put right? a, you, a girl puts a booty pick up, she gets 500 likes. And they look for the likes. Yeah, of course they do. People don't realize it's a drug. Yeah. That's letting I out turn dopamine. Off, I turned off the comments. I, I turned off the like counts on all my photos now. And it's not even because, it's not even because of any, any particular reason. It's, it's mainly just because I, I don't need that. Oh, Nick only got 90 likes on that picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, he only got 50 on that one. Oh, he got 500 on that you one. Got all the dope oh, he got that. Yeah. I, I don't need that shit. Yeah. I don't fucking need it. Like I, Andre said it best, honestly. You know, if I didn't need the yep. notifications because of my job and 
getting back to people and commenting and shit like that. Like when you guys throw a picture up, I, I want to make sure we get yeah, the algorithms right and I'm commenting right out the gate. But like Andre said it best. He's like, I'm not a slave to the phone. Like I turn my I turn my notifications off on my Instagram. I, I, I got to be honest. I, I, I have I understand the necessity, the need for it, but but I dislike it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the phone. I'm not either, man. I'm not a fan of technology to a certain extent. I know it makes certain things easier, but just like I was saying before, it's releasing dopamine in your brain. It's the same thing like alcohol. It's the same thing drugs. It's Heroin. Like, it's what it, it's what it does. Yeah, and that's and they do it very well. Why do you think the algorithm? It's actually a proven thing. Why do you think you get more? So they'll show your post to more people right out the gate if you close out the app right after you post a picture and don't open the app for a while. Like, it used to be that, like, the second somebody comments on your photo, comment back to them. Like it. Engage instantly. That it, still works because the algorithm then makes... The algorithm then takes in effect. Not only does it take in effect how many people like your post within a certain amount of time frame, but it also takes into effect how many people save your post, how many people share your post, and how many people comment on your post. But the other thing that people have found out is if you close the app and you don't interact with Instagram your post will actually get seen, shown to more people so the notification pops off. up so, so they you get, get so you, you get, get back on look. the app yeah exactly it's exactly. scary instant gratification shit. scary i'm going to post a pic and i want to see how many likes i get oh my god i didn't get enough likes erase erase it yeah that's what people do I, you know I, erase it i mean maybe i need to show a little more titty maybe i got to show a little more butt maybe i got i'm like I've caught oh. myself saying that too sometimes. I've caught myself like, oh, damn, it would have done better if I really waited till the perfect time. And then I go, fuck this. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. It, we had this conversation when we, were, when, we were, when we were working on the intensity stuff. I remember being like, damn, you mean to tell me there's a certain time of day to post a pic, certain times to post a video? I'm like, this is too much. What? Yeah, I'm just going to go back to work, man. I'm just going to go back to the hard work, bro. I, I, I can't. This is just annoying to me. And it's just uh, that's why people hire people that yeah. manage the accounts. That's because yeah. it's literally a second job. Uh, you know, listen, I shot for the guys out in the Hamptons. They were amazing guys. I was on retainer for them for a couple of months, and then it kind of fell through. They 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 got too crazy with shit, and then they weren't really posting what we were doing. And I explained to them, I said, guys, I can give you the f most fire content in the world if mm -hmm. you're not going to post it. This is correct. It's a waste of money for everybody. It's a waste yeah. of my time, and it's a waste of money for you guys. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I like getting paid, but like at the same time, got to post it. I also don't like driving out to the Hamptons, shooting all day, editing for hours for the rest of the week, and then getting you guys everything, and then it doesn't go up in the account because your sister manages the account. Yeah, and it's nothing against them. They're fucking amazing guys. Yeah, and it, but this is why people have other people but that's do what this drives for your them. business too. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, like uh, yeah, it's great that I'm getting paid, but I also I like you guys. I want you guys to see a, a return on your money. And yeah. a return is more engagement and more clients mm -hmm. and more eyeballs on your page. Yep. That's what me bringing me in does. But if you guys aren't going to manage the page, it's a waste of money. Guaranteed. And that's, that, that's what happens, man. You, people realize, business owners realize, like, oh, shit, I have to be active on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Clubhouse now with, with the fucking chats. If you do a podcast, I haven't gotten to edit all the shit lately. Yeah. Like I just got Andre's video up yesterday. I got our video up the the, the the other day. I still have to make our thumbnail. Yeah, I, I shot all weekend. I got to get those edits done. It's like if you don't have somebody doing it for you, that time is so constrained. And then at the same time, I I do need time to go to the gym. I need time to decompress. You need time for you. I need, need time to time. just not be time. not be staring at this fucking screen anymore. Agreed. You know, I Agreed. catch myself in the car. Constantly, I'm not proud of it. I, I said I said it on my way here tonight to to do the podcast with you, and we're gonna get back to yeah, of course, what you were saying as well. Um, I catch myself like checking to see if I have a notification constantly. Like it'll be mounted on on my driver on my mm -hmm. uh, dashboard, yeah. and I'll like tap the screen just out of pure habit, habit, mm -hmm. muscle memory. Tap the screen, tap the screen, yeah. or I'll change the song because it'll light the screen up, and I'll see if anybody messaged me or anything like that. Because mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. This shit blows up all day. Like, yeah. I'm getting messages just like, and I know you know that feeling. Yeah. All day. Messages, notifications. Of course. Calls, voicemails, emails, everything like all that. All day long. So it's like, they're there, and but I, like, I have to, to stop. Extent, I hate it. It's only, I do too. I have to stop like searching for it. One or two people that I just love when they pop on my phone. Not one or two, a few people that I just love when their name pops up on my phone. And that's about it. Everybody says, I hate that. You know, my clients are listening right now. They're like, I, I'm one of those people I hate. Okay. <laughs> well, you can go ahead and think that shit, but it's probably not you. But, um, yeah, I, I, I've, 
I don't really, uh, I don't enjoy it. I feel like a lot of people, I'm, I'm trying lately to not be a slave to my phone. The more I can keep my ringer off, you know, I started a couple of years ago turning my ringer off and leaving my phone in a kitchen area and not, not anywhere near my bed or wherever I was sleeping. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it close by. Even a vibration would make me want to go look at my phone. Yeah. Middle of the night, I, I catch myself it. checking my phone because it's right next to my bed. I hated it. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, what, what am I doing? Like, I don't, I don't like to, I don't want to be a slave to anyone. I don't want everybody, anybody having that kind of power over me where my phone goes off. I got to be like, oh my God, who is it? Yeah. You run I to it. I hate that shit. I hate it. So, but. You know, it is what it is. It's what's going on now. I gotta do that. I, I got. I actually gotta do that. I gotta put my phone somewhere else. It's, I, I, it, it's, it's way tough because it I live to with be. my mom, and it's tough because, you know, for me to just put my phone in the hallway or something like that. Uh, our space. I try to keep my space to me, her mm -hmm. space to her, and because it's her house, ninety percent of the space is hers. Yeah. But like, it's it's tough, man, because like I have so much shit. I got so much no, stuff. I, I get it. I got all the stuff in the garage. It's my gym stuff. I got. All my stuff in my room, and like she'll just keep bringing shit into my room, and I'm just like, there's no more room, yeah. so I can't do anything. Yeah. Um, I I just, I literally just, when I give up the phone at night, I shut the phone down, and I have the plug for it in the kitchen. I plug it up, and I walk away. I don't go back there until unless, I mean, I do have issues sleeping, so if I get up in the middle of the night, sometimes, I may take a look, but that's because I do have a 4 a.m. client, and if I do. You want to see if they're canceling or if yes, they're with you? Yes, so at least I could either stay in bed a little bit longer or I should just get dressed and go to the gym and do cardio. At least I know, you know? But if I didn't have that person booked and my first session was 7 o'clock in the morning, I would not walk over to my phone until I got up. Yeah, smart, man. I, I, I just, I can't be, I don't want to be a slave to the that phone. That dopamine like that. hit, bro. I'm it's telling crazy. you, it's drugs. It's drugs, bro. Yeah. And I don't like it. Well, that's why you see... Nobody can have conversations, you know, speaking of man and the fuck up, nobody can have conversations anymore. No, it's a, it was via text message, right? So yep. instead of standing up and facing you face to face, right, and actually having emotion and feelings Looking involved. somebody in the eye. Yep. Respectable shit. I'm going to send you a text message. Yep. Right? Because I think it's cowardly. It is. Call me. Talk to me. Yeah. If I can't, because I'm with a client, I'll tell you, I'm with a client, I'm a little busy, do me a favor, text me. If it's something serious, I will call you when I'm done. Right? That's that. Remember, remember the night when, uh, oh, shit, my boy was telling me what to do on Instagram, and you had texted me. Remember? Oh, yeah. And I immediately, I was texting you, and I said, yeah. fuck this, and I called you. Yeah, and we talked. Yeah, like this. If we waited to go over text message... You know what I'm saying? Back, yeah, you don't get the emotion. And it's no, it, and you it's don't not get formal. The, yeah, yeah, it's not formal. You don't you don't you know feel the vibe. You don't like hear each other exactly. out. You know, there's so many times where there's like a miscommunication, whether from friends, whether from girls, love mm -hmm. interest, whatever it is, where, hey babe, you want to go out? Yeah, I don't care. It's like now you're sitting there, you're looking you look at me. You, you don't care. What what the don't fuck? you care? I'm about? spending money on you. I'm trying to like see you. I'm trying to <laughs> But like really, she's just like, Yeah, I don't care. I would love to. Like Yeah, and you it's don't, it's just another thing. hear that. That yeah. octave, you don't hear mm -hmm. that, dude. They're training us to be a. I know this is getting way off topic. No, of man machines, of the up, bro. But they're training us to just be such unconnected. Exactly. Straight. Quarantine was one of the. Quarantine was one of those. One of those precursors. I had so much social anxiety coming out of quarantine, and I'm a very confident person. I have zero problems talking to anybody. I don't give a fuck if you're the richest man in the world or if you are the poorest man or woman in the world. It does not matter to me. When we stopped quarantine and I started going places, I would get like like anxiety. tingling, anxiety mm -hmm. in the middle of my chest just being around a lot of people. It wasn't because I was worried about getting sick. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I wasn't worried about that at all. I, it was just like to be around people again and just have all – I've never been like that. It was a weird sensation for me. Yeah. All of these things, the Netflix – oh, oh ne and, then they, and then they switched it up so this way you can't go to the movies now. During that quarantine shit, yeah, we'll start releasing them at home. Of course. Uh, okay, so now I'm just gonna be by myself mm -hmm. without anybody around me, which is okay some of the time. Like we were saying earlier in the Social beginning, Social distancing is exactly what it is. That's what they called it's it. Keeping, it's exactly what it is. It's just keeping you emotionless. And, and then you see the elites, and, and they can all be yeah. around each other no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. They're good to go. They're good to go. They can hang out. No masks. No nothing. 
They can enjoy life. But you... When the quarantine was over, though, don't what see... I wanted to do, I felt like I wanted to hug every single motherfucker that yeah. I saw. I was like, I need some human interaction, goddamn. Give me something. Give me something, shit. Dude, it took like, me, it took me like, it took me a couple months to really get back in my groove and really yeah. start to feel like myself again. Even though I was still around people, but I wasn't around sh- strangers and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 there were cultural shifts and everybody Yeah, exactly. pounding up and not I'm like, dude, we're breathing and the some same air. Just straight running away from you. Running away. Oh my God, I don't have my mask. You don't have a mask on. And they're running. Okay, well, there's people in my neighborhood that still wear masks when they walk around or they cross the street when they see Kenji and I walking. With no mask on. And, and they wear their mask. They're wearing their mask. And they're probably triple vaxxed. It's crazy. It's like that, that shit's just wild to me. It's just, it's like, yo, you got to be a person. It's so We're, fucking bugged out. If you really think that you're going to catch some shit outside with that, then you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're beyond me. But <laughs> this has turned into a COVID I talk. Can, yo, that's good. And that's the problem. Because it's, it's the conversation everybody's having now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Constantly. All the time. Constantly. And I'm so tired of hearing about it. I, I'm just, God. the craziness of it. But anyway, back to like, the, it's that sensation. It's that they're yeah. trying to get you to just turn off your most binary primal emotions of being with people, touching, mm-hmm. feeling, looking people in the eye. Nah, just send them a message. Send them a text. Do this. Do that. Just be totally digital. Oh, you, oh yeah, there's a cash shortage. There's no more... No more paper money. Like this and that. The art, the, the, the art of hard work is gone. I think for the most part, it's gone. Like it's just, everybody loves like, uh, what's the guy's name? David Goggins. Mm-hmm. They love him. They but love they don't want to wanna, him, they they don't don't act do like it. it. Yeah. They don't want to do it. Not at all. But So you got to know that there's something behind what he's saying because you love it. But then why won't you do it? it strikes a chord with you. Why, why do you do exactly the opposite. Where's the drive? Where did that shit go? Like, I, I just don't get it. A lot of people want to only do what they're good at. We're human beings. I get it. Like, you, 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 you're you drawn to, to do the things you're good at, right? Because it makes you feel good. But, you know, the, the old school saying, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So why not strengthen the weakest link? Spend more time on the weakest link. So the whole chain, the whole chain is secure. You'll never be secure doing the things that you are good at, like God-given talent that you're good at. It's the things you're not good at you need to focus on. It's the things you're not good at you need to do more of. If you don't got upper chest, stop doing flat and declines. Work that shelf. Incline all day long. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we'll go from the gym where we roll it over, but it's it's the same thing. But guys, I'm not good on the incline bench. Oh, so that means just don't do it? Like, so when are you supposed to win? When are you going to see change? I, I, and you need it, that, like it, you it said with me. like you said with the um, with the jail scenario. You need that constant breakdown, so the body gets stronger and builds back up. Mm-hmm. That's that. That's that's how this works. Yes, and that's in life too. In, it, in everything, that's how this works. You need that breakdown to build back stronger. Mm-hmm. The muscle fibers tear and they repair. And they tear and, and they, they repair. repair. Exactly. And that's why you can go from doing 70-pound dumbbells to 150-pound dumbbells. That's why you can go from squatting fucking stuffed animals like SpongeBob yeah. to squatting 315. Yeah, by exactly. By putting yourself in the trenches and just doing it. Yeah. You know, I finally felt good the last couple of weeks again. Mm. The neuro stuff doesn't seem to be there anymore. Thank and God. I'm, yeah, and I'm feeling good. Like, I don't step and feel, like, jarring. Yeah. I couldn't explain what was going on with me. And um, to be able to go to the gym the last probably two weeks, three weeks, and not have any issues and to just be excited. Dude, I picked up the 130s today. I was hitting them on, on flat after doing, like, four other exercises for chest yeah. this morning with my boy Dylan. It felt amazing. Dude, I was feeling like a fucking animal today. I was feeling like an animal. Yesterday, we were on the uh, pendulums, not the pendulum squat, the arsenal, the yes. black one. The black one, yeah. That what has the, the pads uh-huh. you get under, uh, six plates on each side. Yeah. Squatting Killing. for, for, for um, three sets of, uh, I think we hit three sets of six. Yeah. Bossing it. Just feeling great. And feeling good. Great. And feeling good. Um, I, that, that work ethic. It's hard work. That, it's that's hard that, work. That's what you have to do, man. I was... Listen, I gotta. I keep saying it every 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 couple of episodes. I gotta lose weight, man. I gotta get back in, and I'm, this is my start. This is my start to like. Now I feel good training again. Now I'm back in. Now I feel that way. All right. Now we're hitting cardio. Now we're getting back. We're gonna start hitting the nutrition again. 
we're all in. Exactly. When I when I was competing, when I got ready for my shows, I didn't take drugs. Mm-hmm. I, I I I couldn't be more serious when the coach that I was working with kept saying, "Oh well, it's a chemical warfare." And I kept saying, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm doing it naturally. If you don't want to work with me, I'll find somebody else. And, oh, no, 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 we got you, we got you. And he got me in shape, but he starved me. And I would look like a fucking string bean when I got on stage because he didn't know how to work with a natural athlete. Natural. Yeah, exactly. But I put 180% in those preps. I dieted for 23 fucking weeks. And I look at people that diet for 12 weeks, take a ton of gear, and they're bitching during and their prep. And they're complaining the whole time. And I'm Nobody like, Dude, told you to do this show. Do you understand how hard this was for me? Exactly. You, have, you have no idea what it was like to have to be natural and do this the natural way. Killing yourself every morning with cardio. Diet. Immaculate. No extra thermogens or burners. It's all you. How intense you're bringing it every single day, that's what you're getting out of it. And 100%. It, and 100%. My, my work ethic was unmatched during that time. I actually look back now, and I go, I don't know how the fuck I did it. I have no clue how I did it. It was... Because you told yourself you would. I told myself constantly. There's a, there's I, a difference. Like, there's people out there who want to do shows and compete just to say they did. Right? They're doing it for, once again, the likes. They're doing it for not the real reason as to do that. Right? So here we go. You're going to complain the whole time. The whole time. I remember two days before my first show, I remember one of my boys had just did a show and he won. And he's like, Jamal, like, are you seriously about to just jump on stage without really doing like a full-blown prep? I said, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of live this life, man. I'm going to just go to the sauna, pull some water out, and uh, I'll be all right. He's like, yeah, but you don't take shit. You're gonna, they're going to smoke you on stage, bro. Like these guys, you picked the biggest show on the East Coast to go to for, for uh, being a national qualifier, for qualifier. Like you can't, don't do that show. I'm like, a show is a show, man. Like I'm just going. Why am I gonna like, do an easy show and bitch out for like, what? This is I'm going in for to go in I'm and go compete. Ahead and do this. He's like, are you taking this? I said no. He's like, dude, don't do it. You're gonna embarrass yourself. And I was like, all right, whatever. Now, deep down, I said to myself, I said, so I've been training people for how many years? God, please let me win something. <laughs> because if I don't, I feel like everything that I've been preaching for this 25 years or so is going to be in vain. So I'm going to sign up for every division. And hopefully, I do well in one. And I went out there, clean as a whistle, and did my thing. I had that and turn out for you. I remember, I won. There you go. Everything. So it, it, it goes back to people being like, oh, well, how did you feel? I was like, well, if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it because I'm doing it for me. When you're doing a show for everyone else, yes, you're going to feel tired. You're going to feel drawn. You're going to feel hungry. You're going to be like, oh, I just want a cheat meal. Guys are asking me for diet plans and shit like that. And they're like, yo, um, Jamal, there's, there's nothing on here about a cheat meal. I said, you think you deserve it? I'll tell you when you can have a cheat meal. I'm not writing on your on your on your fucking diet plan a cheat meal. You're not getting a, a scheduled cheat meal. You get a cheat meal when you deserve it. When you've worked hard enough. When you deserve it. Stop this bullshit. Like you hear people talking about cheat meals and refeeds, and you feel like you deserve that. You've done nothing. You don't deserve shit. Bust your ass for a little while. Let somebody else tell you what you deserve. Don't come in a gym and, you know, the first time client, oh, yeah, you know, I can, you can put on two plates on the on the bench. I usually can get it for, like, a few sets of 20. I'm like, cool. Now, if you just shut your mouth and did four reps for me, I'd have been happy. But now that you told me you could do 20, I want you to do 20. Bust if you do out. anything less than 20, now I hate you. Now I feel like you're a fucking, you're, you're, you're a fucking idiot and all you do is talk shit. Right? So you just shut your mouth and do what you're supposed to do. Do it for you, not for everybody else. Don't try to fucking, you know, turn me on and tell me you're doing three sets of 20. Bitch, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? Because now when I'm asking you to do it, you can't do it. Right? Yeah. So, what's up? But people, they're doing, they're doing the shows for all the wrong reasons. Well, all doing they're doing it for, for notoriety on, yeah. on, on, uh, on Instagram. It's like, I'm sorry. All they're doing is complaining. I didn't realize that you had to be 18 years old and step on stage when you're 19 and then get pissed off and have a and, and do a vlog about how you weren't ready. It's like, well, I don't know. Maybe you were going against guys that have been training for 10 years. Maybe, maybe you decided to just try and do a prep for 16 weeks and thinking, you know, it's a piece of cake. I'm going to take mad gear. Have you ever seen 
And it's going to be hard for the audio listeners, mm-hmm. but like the video listeners, I'll put the video up right when it starts so you can watch it with it. Have you ever seen the Michael Jordan commercial, Maybe It's My Fault? Yes, I have. Okay, so this is the commercial that I watched maybe a thousand times during that 23-week prep. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, I, it was a year after my long-term relationship ended. I was just feeling super vulnerable. And I said, man, I got to do this for me, and I got to yep. go fucking ham. Did it for you. And I went and in the gym like a savage every single day. I prepped my meals away you at see school. What pain, you see what pain led to? I almost tattooed one of, the, one of the lines, one of his lines from the video on my arm. Like, that's how much I wanted to look down at it or look at it in the mirror and have it read perfectly right, the right yeah. way. So I just looked at it every single time I was doing a set and I felt fucking tired or shitty or whatever. I was like, there's my fucking motivation. Keep going. This video. If you ever want a tattoo, I know you. I have a, I have a great tattoo artist for you. Mm-hmm. When it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. <sighs> so good. It's true. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength. That my pain was my motivation. Pain. I love that. Maybe I Fear. Bro. Yeah, it's the truth. When it's he truth. when he said every I used to repeat that line in my head every time I was like, damn, I gotta get out of the gym. Every single time. Maybe it was my fault that you didn't see that failure was my strength, that pain was my motivation. I was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, fuck that bitch. I was yeah, <laughs> every exactly. single time I was like, exactly. fuck that bitch. We're going for another rep. Yeah, you gotta you gotta use that pain. You, you gotta have to. a reason. You gotta have something, and it doesn't have to. You know, I'm not saying that everybody needs a reason to get up and get and work hard, but you do. You have to have a reason, and if that reason is to prove to yourself that you're better than than what everyone else that's thinks, the best reason. that's the best reason. Or if that reason is to prove to somebody else, then be you prove it be, to yourself. Be that way, but then understand that they don't that their opinion doesn't fucking matter anymore, and that they don't. They, even if they think that you're the worst person in the world, and you're trying to prove them wrong. And you're trying to change their opinion in a set amount. Of, it doesn't matter because you are going to come out a stronger, better, more developed person on the other side. It's it's the truth, man. People don't want to work hard, man. No, I see these do not. I see these young guns in the gym. I, I, I feel like I could say that now because I'm 30. Yeah. <laughs> I see these young these Thundercats. I see these young dudes, and I'm just like, a couple of them I've given I've given John Metal workouts to before, and they're not doing it. Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Uh, there was a kid at the gym, super nice kid. I, li- I like him a lot. He's a really good dude. Um, trained super hard for him. Trained super hard and dedicated as a motherfucker. I said to him something one time. I said, "Yo, let me give you this Meadows workout. You know, follow this plan. You'll really enjoy it. It'll kick your ass and it'll change you." Okay. After like, and it was a, I think it was a sixteen week program. Mm-hmm. After I want to say two weeks, you saw him in the gym. I saw him and he's like hitting the same workout that he hit two days ago. Yeah. And I go, "What are you doing?" And he Not goes, the plan. "He goes." Oh, well, you know, I skipped a couple of those workouts and I went to like this one and this one. I go, but that's not the plan. That's not the, the plan. The plan is you, he says you do legs, you fucking do legs. He looked he, at that plan and said, this is hard. No, nah, this is too much. Everybody, you don't need all this. I mean, I do a boot camp and, and people are just like, why does it have to be so hard? I say, well, listen, you could pay me for a walk in the park with Jamal if you like. It's a separate price. And I walk in the park and you can talk about all this bullshit. I said, <laughs> but you're paying for boot camp. Like, so let's go. But but why does it have to be this hard? What what why is life so easy? What, we like, what there's person, challenges. What person, even in, 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 in the in the working environment, in the working field, like the who doesn't sacrifice? Like you got these, you have these um Financial advisors and planners and everybody that works on Wall Street when they first get out of college and they get their job and they're shooting their fucking make partner and or vice president and they get an apartment in the city just so they're closer to their job because they're looking to work 16 hour days. 
and they can just walk across the street, take a nap, come back and do that, right? They put in hours and hours and hours worth of work, seven days a week. They even would relocate themselves to show the job that they really want this, and they do it for years. Yeah, there's no instant gratification there. None. You are busting your ass till you're like 50 sometimes. And then all of a sudden, you hit that marker where it's like, oh, I can actually sit back and relax now. So my hard work is paid off. But nowadays, it's more so like, yeah, I've been here for like four weeks, and uh, they're not even talking about a raise. Yeah, I can't even believe that they're, you, not, you, they're not giving me paid vacation. You can leave now. Like, wh where is this all coming from? You know what I'm saying? I, like, I'm having a hard time, right? Because I feel like I don't want to call it bad parenting. I don't want to say that. No. I don't. You could say it. But I feel like, like I know with me, I have to catch myself. I didn't have shit when I was young. I wasn't an envious person, but I noticed that people had things and, you know, I was like, damn, must be nice, you know, but. Are you talking about like a family environment or are you talking about? Family and, and stuff, just like, you know, seeing families. Material items. Going, yeah. Or vacations. Buying stuff, kids coming to school with the sneakers, the clothes, yeah. you know, we're doing the hand-me-down thing, like, you know, whatever. You know, what Sergio Valente's with a gold buckle on the shit. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know. How much were those? God. Look, $12? Yeah. What? Maybe not even that? Yeah, you know we're out here making The only thing that saved me was just like, yo, listen, Jamal's a different level of crazy. Like, he'll beat you. He'll probably beat you to death, and he'll probably still be beating on you while you're in your coffin. So you might want to just stop talking about the Sergio Valente's, bro. <laughs> he's, he's, the boy's not all right. So... That's what you saved me but, and my my brother and, and you, my sister. Because but you may do with what you had. I, you have to. Yeah, you, you have, have to. to. So um, I just, I have a problem because now I bust my ass on a daily basis to be able to provide. And I witnessed things when I was younger that I always told myself that I would never, certain looks on my grandparents' faces and stuff that I would never want to see on another loved one's face again. And if it takes me working 22 hours out of a day, then I'm going to do it. So now my little munchkins, they, they, I get them everything. And I have to catch myself sometimes. I, I need them to have that grit. I need them to know what grind is. I need them to know what desire and want is. They just can't want something and get it. I, I, I can't. Sometimes I can't help myself, though. You know, I just will... Because you want to spoil them. I want to. Because you didn't they, have they, you didn't they, have it a certain way when you grew up. You can provide that certain way for them. And now you're at this you're at that point where I completely understand where you you expect them to understand that there's hard work involved. Exactly. But I don't. I, but I don't want them to feel a sense of entitlement. They don't want to feel, feel like, depravity. Exactly. I mean, my dad telling me one time too. He's like, listen, if you're gonna sign up for this sport, that's fine. If you don't like it, you can't quit. You can't quit on your team. You got to finish the whole season, okay? You can't turn your back on your teammates. The other day, my daughter's telling me that she doesn't, she doesn't, uh, she didn't want to go to dance. Okay. And I almost said, okay, just don't go to dance then. I had to catch myself. Like, no, you said you want to go to dance. So you got to go to dance. It was a makeup. I guess she couldn't go during the week because she was sick. So it was a makeup on the weekend. I was like, no, you, you have to go to dance. And she's like, but I, I said, no, no, no. You said you wanted it. And everybody's waiting for you. You guys are going to have some sort of uh, performance. It, you got to kill it because Daddy Cameron going to be on. Okay? So you got to go. Daddy's bringing Nikki Rizzles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we got, we got everything coming. So... Uh, I fight with that, you know? So sometimes I feel like I can't really get mad at at parenting because I, I understand why parents want to do what they're doing, but I don't think we realize the detriment that we're causing. And it's all out of love. But you got to love them even more to let them suffer a little bit. Let them want a little bit. You know what I mean? I think the 70s yeah. and the, six, uh, the 70, late 70s, early 80s are just fucking these generations up. The kids, the, the 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 generation that had kids, yeah. they're they're underneath me. They're like yeah. early twenties right now, late tw yes. late teens. That group, I just I don't know what is going on, but like you're saying, it's that entitlement because they grew up with everything at their fingertips. 
That Amazon yeah. Prime is right here when I need it. It's, oh, we didn't have to suffer and download our songs illegally on LimeWire and Kaza. <laughs> <laughs> like, they just, Dude. you just go on Apple Music and stream a song whenever you want. Yo, I don't even know if you remember this. Uh oh, here we Back go. Back in the day, my <laughs> grandfather said, Look, I have a tape recorder, okay? And I can't go out and buy you the new album that's coming out right now. So, this is what we're gonna do. I already know what you're gonna say. We're going to take this piece of the cassette out. Now, this is a regular cassette. Maybe it could have been a biblical cassette. We're going to take this piece out of the back, and we're going to shove paper inside to make it flat. We're going to put it in the recorder, and every time a song comes on the radio that you like, hit the record button. I said, okay. And we record the music off the radio. And that's what we would end up you know, Grandpa? listening to. Well, yeah. Granddaddy, granddaddy yeah. genius. Always. Always making shit happen, you know. He, he turned shit to sugar, that's for sure. So it was, I was like, oh, perfect. So I would always have these cassettes with paper towels stuck inside them <laughs> and listening to in a cassette player. I didn't have a Walkman yet. Do, do y'all even know what Walkmans are? No, nah, I have no clue. Uh, they have no clue. I had the first iPod. Know. You had the first iPod? First iPod. I had Walkmans shit. too, though. I had the Sony one. And then every time I'd be on the bus and it would go vertical, that shit would skip. And I'd be like, it God skip. damn it. Wait, was that a, the disc player? Disc. Or? I didn't have a cassette. Oh no, I had no, a that was, that, I was. That I was, was around. I was around when people still listen to Ace tracks. You listen, know that. Man, I just yeah, want to yeah. let you know. I forget. I think you're my age. You know what I mean? I'm telling you. I think you're 30 with me. Shit. Yeah, dude. I um. But, I had the first. I had the first Sony Walkman. I remember that shit. That was fucking a one, dude. And then every time that that the new that iPod came out, that first iPod with the click with the with the with the wheel, oh, with everything, the wheel and the four buttons across the top. Oh, yeah, man. You that, felt that made a world of difference. You felt so cool when I pulled chance. that shit out. I was the coolest motherfucker. I was like, "Yeah, I got all my songs right here." I, I remember when I got I came Audio out. Slave. I got Black Sabbath. I got everything right here. It's my I, fingertips. I would look at people like, "Damn, must be nice." <laughs> shit. I was lucky. So my dad bought my affection when I was a kid. So you know, my dad was never a, a rich man. He, yeah. he was an iron worker. So he worked his ass off, his fucking dick off every single day. Inclement weather, no matter what, he always worked. And he was a bartender as well. So constantly working, constant. He, he did what he had to do. He had, did what he had to do. But because we never connected on a father-son level, he always paid for things for me. Yeah. And I would guilt him into it, too. I knew I, I was a good salesman. Yeah, of course. I've always been a good salesman. All kids, so like, know, all kids know, know what's up. So I knew what buttons to press. I, I knew if I said, oh, yeah, this new thing came out, and oh, it's great. My dad would know, oh, if I buy it for him, he's not going to ask me to do anything else. Like, he'll mm, just exactly. he'll sit in the corner or he'll sit and play with whatever it was while he's at my house for the weekend. So that made me a different person growing up, looking back at that now. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, like I looked at other kids that had dads really that could run run yeah. around with them, or that I'd see the other kids' dads coaching baseball and stuff like that, and I cry sometimes. I'd get upset. I'd of think course. about that shit because it always made me feel like, well, you know, and my dad has had MS, so mm -hmm. he, as he degenerated and progressively got worse with it, it's like he really couldn't walk anymore. So I was like, damn, I, I you know, dad can't run around with me. Dad can't do shit with me. But like, dad was always dependable. He'd buy me the newest. Newest yeah. iPod, and so he like bought my affection over the years. So I always had cool tech mm -hmm. um, up until. That's why you're 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 like this now. Yeah, well, that's why I keep buying I'm myself. Confused as shit watching what you're doing, but I, yeah, that's why I keep buying my my the new shit, and yeah. I hear new processors, and I'm just like, oh god, give it to me now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so it's um, it, it instilled a very different personality in me, especially now. And then mm -hmm. when I first was getting ready to drive. My mom asked me, she, she was driving me to my first job. I worked, so I worked, I started working when I was like 14 years old. I worked at a cafe. I was a barista and mm -hmm. my fat ass would eat all the candy behind the counter. They'd, they'd, <laughs> they'd, they'd pack the candy in these little containers and they'd be like, yeah, just scoop some out, put it in the container, just keep it stocked up throughout the day. Bro, they had the big ass bag of just licorice. I'd be just killing honk, it, honk, just killing it. Like what happened to this whole bag? Fucking people a lot buying of people it's crazy. A lot of people came in. Licorice is a hot item today. Uh, I don't know where the money's at, but they came in. <laughs> but she was driving me to work one day, and she just went to me. She goes, um, you know, you're going to be driving soon. Your next year, you're going to get your permit. You're going to be driving. What kind of car do you want? I said, oh, shit. Mom's about to bust me down with a car? Like, th this is, bless mm -hmm. me? Yeah. And I said, you know, Ma, I love your Audi. Your Audi's beautiful. I said, she had an A6, mm -hmm. black on black. It was sick. Yeah. 
And she went, wow, Audi, huh? She goes, you know, it's expensive. And this is your first real life lesson in your teens. You want nice things. It's time for you to pay for them. I, said, I love it. Shit, mom got she me. She got you. She baited you. She baited me. She brought she you fucking in. And got fucking me. Fucking but you know what? It's the truth, though. Ever since the then, truth. and I want you to input, but ever since then, man, I worked at Best Buy. I worked at Apple. I worked for myself. I do it. People ask me, what do you want? I go, nothing. I buy it myself. Don't buy me nothing. Don't buy me shit because I'm gonna be I'm gonna feel guilty like oh I owe God. you something that you it. bought me this. Bro. I don't want shit. Newest MacBook comes out, don't worry. Papa will sell his old shit and figure out a way to pay for it. So this way I can still I can still do it all. New phone comes out, I want the new phone, I'll get the new phone. I'll be okay. I don't need you to pay for shit for me. Yeah, I, I have a serious problem receiving accepting gifts. And I remember I remember when I was young, I remember I was gonna I lied on my working papers to get a job. Because I needed to make some money the the right way, and uh, I got a job at, at 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 a college as a lifeguard. I took the lifeguard test, everything, a year younger than I was supposed to, because I lied on my working papers, and uh, because a lifeguard was one of the best paying jobs for a kid my age. Yeah. So I was working, and I got a job that would have me work until twelve thirty at night, and my mother was like, "All right, well, is this you know?" You got to be responsible. If you're going to take this job, like you're going to have to do it. I was like, well, that's why I'm taking the job. I said, all right, then this, this is on you. I don't think you should do this. I think you should find a different job. You should stop playing sports. You should get a regular job. Did she not like the hours? She just, I, the way she looked at it was, I guess it was a responsibility thing, being that if I'm saying I'm going to do it, then if I'm saying I'm going to do it, then do it. But you're making, you're choosing something that's going to make your life hard. And I didn't care. I like hard. I like for my life to be hard. I don't want anything in my life to be easy. If it's easy, to me, I look at it like it's not worth it. It's not going to last. And it does do anything for my growth. Less of a dying breed right there. At all. Now, I don't care. Now, I'm not letting this derail the topic because I don't want to no. stop it. But think about that on the terms of the kids that are handed Bentleys when they're young. Or they're of handed course. all the shit. They don't appreciate Listen, shit. I always use this analogy when I talk to my clients sometimes. And I'm like, take a kid from the hood and a kid whose family is wealthy. Privileged. Yes. So this kid can afford all the best trainers, gyms, teams, and everything. And this kid's going to play stickball and play basketball at the park. You know, not not uh, uh, fundamental not being do, doing well. And not hitting speed sports. ladders and shit like no, that. He's just going through the grid. Definitely not. And they work their way up the ladder, right? This kid gets his full scholarship because his father's an alumni of a college and actually donates money. So he gets a full scholarship to go play ball. Full ride. School. This guy's a walk on, but he loves the sport. So walk on. He makes the team. He does the best he can do. Draft comes. This guy gets first contract, million dollars. This guy gets first contract, league minimum. Let's call it 250. Who's the successful one? Who does that money and what you just earned mean more to? People would think that it's the one that got the million dollar. First, it's from that motherfucker. Because you know what? They're, they're, he already got a trust fund. Yep. That motherfucker has money. He's wasted a million dollars in his life. This one has nothing. Made do with nothing. And with this, he's thinking in his head, I got to buy my mom this. I got to do this. With this one, this guy's thinking, I need... Earrings, jewelry, a car. Rolly. Exactly. And that's the difference. That's exactly the difference. And that's exactly how I look at things when things are easy. We've had a lot of year, uh, easy years as a society. Uh, the last amen. 20 years has been a lot of easy years. Not easy for everybody, but easy in general. Yeah, I, I, And I things are easy. heating up because... It's getting hard. Easy, easy living breeds weak men and oh, weak women. Hands down. And that's exactly what this whole thing is that we're talking about, manning the hands fuck up down. in general. And this is manning the fuck up for men and women. This is not sexual in any way, like sexist, where it's only for guys and it's only for girls. It's everybody. Yes. Man the fuck up, grow a pair of breasts or nuts, whatever it might be. Whatever it may be. Whatever you desire to grow. And go get that money. And go get that money. Go get that scholarship. Go get that fucking, go get the That's food and put it on the table. That's Because a fact. we've had a lot of years of some easy shit, and it's about to get hard the mm -hmm. next couple of years. And everybody needs to man the fuck up. And it's time 
to put your big boy and girl pants on mm -hmm. and really think how bad do you fucking want it? See, the funny thing is my, my cousin sent me this the other day, right? Whoa, did anybody see that? He just flipped his phone open? Flipped it. My man is so fucking sophisticated. It is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a throwback, but it's a present. It's the present day. So my cousin sent me this. I'm trying to find it. I hope I didn't erase it. But it says, uh, okay, dear men, take your 21-day leave from work. Go home and tell your woman that you lost your job. Explain further that there was some serious issues and you had to use all of your savings. Spend the next 14 days, though, observing how she starts to treat you. And now discover who you're going to choose as your wife. Right? So now we're talking about big big girl panties, big boy pants, whatever you want to call it. You know, you got to choose. You know, I, I, I could say the woman I'm with is is one that will grab three jobs. I'll pick up the slack this month. And, 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 and get to work. I know that. A lot of people can't say that. And it's, it's sad. Because some people don't know how to pick up the slack. Some people don't know how to get out there and get gritty and get in the dirt and thug it out. Some people don't know how to do that. They're not taught how to do that. They've never done it. They've never seen it done. Right? They wouldn't even know where to start. And that's the problem. Right? So my little munchkins will, will be like, damn, you know, I, I don't see daddy. Daddy works like crazy. I, I want them to see that. I'm going to teach you how to work smarter than I did with the things that I learned along, along the years. But... Hard work is the catalyst, man. It is. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people just have not witnessed that or did they not care to pay, for, to pay attention to it. But they don't even know how to, how to address, like, loss or hard times or anything like that. You really got to be careful and bolt down the medicine cabinet for some of, these, some of these people. Like, they can't deal with it. They'll just go over there and just turn to drugs. They'll turn to alcohol, whatever, to just get a feeling of... of of uh, euphoric, a, a, a euphoric feeling. It's and it's sad. Yep. Instead of just putting your shoulder to the wheel and grinding. I've had people. Um, I've had people that uh, I know th that I used to be really tight with, and then part ways happens, grow out of each other, mm -hmm. different directions. And then I would have uh, friends of mine, mutual friends of mine, tell me that that person was sending them pictures of a gun on the table and like them drinking just because life got hard and it's not even that they're it's not even that they were in that state that they were going to actually do it it's the attention grab it's the attention exactly it's the attention grab because that, that person wouldn't do it yeah that's the, that's the funny part it's like we know this person you know you would not never do that it's like okay and then yeah. every little hardship they just go well I gotta I gotta booze my shit away I gotta I gotta do instead drugs to get it away instead of attacking the fucking problem head on. Take your problem. Figure out a figure out a figure I'm gonna out dissect mission. that motherfucker and I'm gonna defeat it. There's so many different opportunities and ways that you can manipulate things, whether it's work related, health related, mm -hmm. relationship related, anything. There's so many different ways that you can just transform your life. And it's almost like now with the I might get hate for this, but now with the the um Legalization of marijuana. Mm -hmm. People are sitting there going, "Oh, great! I could smoke all the time." It's like, I'm not against marijuana, no, I, but I'm not. also not for it. I'm all, I'm someone who's very neutral with it. I think it has yeah. medicinal, amazing medicinal purposes for people that need it. But I also think that as a society, it dumbs us down. I'm not I'm not against a lot of things, but when you abuse it, that's and what I'm saying. Using yeah. it for the wrong reasons. I'm definitely against. Yeah, I think it dumbs us down as a society. Things. I think you're smoking every because I know people that smoke every single day. Like if you suffer from depression or anxiety or whatever it is, and it, it like it it legit makes you be able to function. I get it. But you're but also if you have no if you don't suffer from anything and you just love to be high. Come on, correct. Dude. That's what I'm Let's saying medicinally. Real. Yeah. But at the same time, you're now using that as a crutch instead mm -hmm. of facing your demons, going to therapy, and trying to become a better human being. 
Yeah, yeah everybody's got to go to therapy. And as you said, facing that shit head on. Yeah, head on. You said everyone's got to go to therapy? Everybody should go to therapy. I want, I'm want. i looking for a good therapist because I need to go I'll, again. I'll, I'll hook you up with my dude. I'm telling you right Please now. Do. I think every single person. I love the Even thought. though you may think you're cool and you're normal. No. Every single person needs to sit down with a therapist just to talk. And have an outside perspective of your exactly. mind and what's going on. Exactly. Because you will clear up so many demons. You will figure out so much shit about yourself. Yeah. It is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I, probably, I Hands down, probably one of the best things I've done for my for my own mental mental state. Like, I mean, a lot of people may not know. They, they, they know I'm, like, standoffish and I'm, like, by my, I'm to myself very often. But, like, I have a horrible, horrible temper and, like, a... a just a, every once in a while, like a little inner rage. And I was just explaining to someone the other day that I've learned to control my temper and anger. But the crazy part is when I let it take over and I'm angry and I'm, and I'm mad and I'm in a rage, I love it. I love the feeling that I have. And I know it's weird. You like the adrenaline rush. I love the... I love the... I feel like it's, I don't know, and I haven't yet be, been able to break it down on whether or not I love it because it's me showing, f like, Fero fearlessness. Ferocity. Right, exactly. I'm ferocious, and, I'm, I, I, and th there is no fear anymore, right? Whatever it was that got me this way, I don't think people realize what fear is. Fear leads to you having a temper. Fear leads to these problems. So... I feel like when I'm like that, I'm not scared of anything. I feel like I can run through a fucking wall. I feel strong. I feel unstoppable. But does it mean it's healthy? No. And the sad part is sometimes when I get there, I just want to stay there. I don't want to hug. Meanwhile, a hug is probably all I fucking need. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like you just need some affection to just calm you down. I don't want that. I want some, to be mad. Somebody break out the glass te the glass case <laughs> with a teddy bear in it for, for Jamal. He's raging again. You know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> it's like, but it's it's weird. But I didn't realize all that until I went and sat down and just spoke to somebody. That's all you gotta do. You know, that's it. Air it out. Air air you out gotta, your air. You gotta, you gotta break down all your demons, man. And that's and you know, and that's that's something that I want to leave for another episode for us to talk about. Guaranteed. I want to talk about the stigmas of being men mm -hmm. and what we go through and how you can't do certain things, can't show certain things. So I think that's actually a huge part of it because some yes. guys would probably not want to go to therapy because they that. feel like they're they're a, a pussy or less of a man for not for going to therapy and having to air out there. But we'll we'll yeah, leave it for that. Let's talk about that. We'll leave it for that. But on manning the fuck up. Yes. To kind of recap and 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 hit the points on the head again. Uh these these easy times have really we blessed and cursed us mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that things are going to get very difficult for a lot of people. They already have recently with how the world is going and changing. Mm -hmm. And I think that more people than they think are going to have to figure out going out on their own and being an entrepreneur when they never thought they were going to. Yeah. Because their job is no longer safe and their job is no longer secure. And doing what we do, like we're very different in careers, mm -hmm. personal training to videography, photography, podcasting. Um, supplement owner. Yeah, supplement owner, <laughs> supplement store owner, uh, uh, supplement brand owner, I should say. We're very different in our careers, but they're very similar. Yes. Because if we don't go out there and get it, we don't make money. We don't make no money. And the people that sit back... And they get their check every two weeks, and they don't have that adversity. And they were given money, and I'm not, this isn't everybody, but they were given money when they were kids, when, mm -hmm. they're, when they were young. They were given their first car for free. They never paid their cell phone bill. I had cousins that weren't paying their fucking cell phone bill, up in, and they're like older than me, up until like a year or two ago. I didn't pay my own cell phone bill since I was 14 fucking years old. After I started stealing my mom's upgrade, she goes, all right, get your ass off my plan. She's like, I'm, I'm over you. I'm like, how have you... I pay my car, the insurance, everything. I pay literally everything but rent. Actually, I pay business rent. I yeah, pay exactly. my office rent. Mm -hmm. So I have my yeah, own true. rent too. It's so true. it's you have a grit, you have a grind. I have a grind. People who don't have that, if that's taken from They've them. never experienced that before. And so when that that when that cushiness of and I'm not this is this varies. It could be low, it could be high. When that cushiness of let's say $70,000 a year salary is either cut or is lost. gone. Yeah. And your job is no longer there. And there's no more pension. 
And now you got to figure out health insurance too. I used to get made fun of. You don't have any health insurance? Were you stupid? No. I didn't want to pay $700 a month on health insurance when I have student loans and I have business expenses. You have to prioritize. Yeah. But you don't understand that because your benefits are rolled in. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Good for you. But then when But now happens. when that goes away and you now sit there and you go, shit, there's no there's no check coming in every two weeks. Shit, I'm getting fat because I ain't and hitting I ain't the gym. No benefits. I'm I'm not hitting the gym. I'm I'm fat now. Oh wait, my health insurance isn't reimbursing my gym membership. So now I actually have to pay for the four hundred dollars and it's on me and I have to go and I don't get reimbursed for this. You're you're gonna experience some hard times and it's gonna test this people's true. it's gonna test people's grit and it's gonna test their mentality too, especially. The mental, they're gonna you know, fold. you want to talk about mental health? Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be crazy. People will fold, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. even know how I, it's to, like to change things. Maybe you're trying to. There's no way to change things because the weak, it's it's Darwinism. The weak will die mm -hmm. off and yes. fail, and yes. it is what it is. And I hate to say it and like that, but, but guess what? There's a fucking winner and there's a loser. Okay. We're not giving out participation trophies in this life. <laughs> they may have given them to you at Little League that, when you were that's younger. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. That's another thing I don't understand. How to, Where the fuck is this participation trophy because bullshit Because everybody from? should feel included. Oh, my God. No. You, didn't particip you participated and you didn't do well. You don't get a trophy. Like, come on. But that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the realm that they're breeding I know. the next generation. Softening even. everyone. Softening everybody Worrying up. about people's feelings. But you know what? When you hurt someone's feelings... They'll heal stronger. But instead, let's just baby everyone so everyone's a little bitch. Everyone's getting picked up every, every second. Every time they cry, everyone's getting picked up, like my, like my friend's kid. Yeah. And they, they don't learn from it, and they just keep crying, and they just keep crying. You fall and bust your ass? Go ahead. You'll be all right. If you're crying, we have to, we have to leave and go to the hospital. Uh, I knew it. You're just fine. Go ahead. Go. Play. I told my buddy to use that line on his yeah. kids. He hasn't you you know this what I do. Yeah. He hasn't, you, he hasn't used it yet. Yeah, I said, dude, you got to use it, man. Oh, oh, you're cr you crying? You seriously injured? We're leaving. We have to go. We gotta go to the hospital. We gotta go. No, 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 no. I'm okay. No, 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 no playing. No. You sure? Oh, you're good. That's what I thought. <laughs> go ahead and play. I fucking love that. I, I, that's what it is. Pack your bags. Come on, we gotta go. We gotta go to the hospital. You're hurt. Come on, you're crying. What? Yeah, pack your bags. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go to the hospital. I gotta get you in there. We gotta get you a gown. Uh, I'm okay. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Go ahead All and right, go play. Ba back to life. Yeah. You gotta strengthen everybody up, and 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 it really does. I know you said you said you didn't want to say it's parenting, but it yeah. really does come it does. to the parenting because yeah. your home life balance of what's going on and the the stability of a father, a mother, whatever it might, how those lessons are being brought onto those kids is affecting each and every generation, and the softening of society is really bad right now. Yeah, and we have to is. get back to a state of shit's tough. Mm -hmm. And you got to grind it out. Dude, what did what did 20-year-olds do in the fucking 30s and 20s? Dude, they were busting their ass two, three jobs. They were doing what you do in a day. Working in steel mills. They were bringing... Oh, Just think about it. You remember watching Little House on the Prairie? You ever watched that? No. You never watched Little House on the Prairie? No. These dudes... These men used to leave the house and just bust their ass all day long, and their wives would stay home and be nothing but happy as fuck when they came home. It, it, it was like... I mean, I know it's a show, but like back in the day, a, a lot of life was like that. Yeah. Hardships. Everyone, everyone, everyone worked hard. My grandmother worked two jobs when she was younger. Uh, her, her father. Marriages worked. Her father, her father was uh, uh, the first, uh, I guess that would make her first generation Italians. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because her father came over on the boat. Mm -hmm. She would work in a pasta factory. Yeah. And she would get home every single day and put food on the table for my gra for my great grandfather. Yeah. And she would wait till he cleared his plate, and then he would be working all day too. It was a team environment. Team effort. I'm telling you, everybody's grinding, not just one person. Yeah. It wasn't just oh, my husband goes to the work. He he, he works all day. Oh my my wife yeah, goes to nah. work. He, she it's works all day. It's that, all about a team. And that's also why I'm still single because I'm looking for that teammate. Teammate. I, I, ain't, I ain't settling for someone who's a... Do, do not, who's, do not I am settle. not settling for someone who sits that there would and be, takes. That would be my advice. Especially after I'm grinding it settle. out all these who years. The fuck cares how long it takes. Don't settle. No. Listen, we talked about sitting in quiet and just not really like talking to anyone or being around anyone. Yes, being quiet, sitting in quiet with a baby on your chest is one thing. But <laughs> being able to sit across the table from someone you can have a real legit wholesome conversation with. 
Everyone needs to find that. Yeah. Everyone. So don't do that. Don't settle. Bro. No. And until then, I just have a pack of Akitas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How good, dude. He's so great. Dude, he just fucking chill. It's unbelievable, man. I'm surprised even he was like. He got yeah, up and he went right to his bed and he just chilled out. Yeah, he, and then guess what? When we when we finish this, he's gonna be like, "Okay, where are we going to where, now? Where's now? We out. Where we at next?" But yo, I dude, yo, always a pleasure, homie. Come on, man. You already give me some fucking dabs, man. This is my always. man. I love you, dude. I love you. Too, so yeah, man. man. This is another episode of Rizology in the Bat Cave with Jamal. There you go. This is what we do, man. This yeah, is wait uh, to the next one. I think it's episode seven. This is episode seven. It's big stuff. Big we, stuff. We chugging along, baby. Mm-hmm. But until Making next moves. time, that's Thanks, it, sir. man. Peace.